So I have something on my mind recently that is making me slightly uncomfortable to talk about because um, I might take a hit on it. Um, and uh, the reason why is because some of you may love it and some of you may not be aware of it and some of you might have seen it, but I don't know, maybe you dismiss it. Maybe you don't even watch these things. And um, the kind of uh, art instruction that I'm talking about and that I'm seeing more and more uh, about is art hacks. So, especially on YouTube, I, because I am an artist and I follow other artists and I'm interested in art content, I am being inundated by people who are basically promoting art hacks. And um, while you may or may not love those things, I really, and I, I don't want to sound judgy because I definitely could probably sound very judgy soon or um, somewhere in my content uh, of my conversation, I could sound judgy. Um, but I don't mean to be judgy because I do believe that whatever helps you be creative is a good thing. But food for thought today is that I feel that art hacks really are just a, a time sucker. And um, they don't help you learn as an artist how to think for, your, for yourself and to um, troubleshoot in your own artwork. Like for example, in, in painting a leaf, you, you don't need to double load a, a brush up and do a one swipe thing. I never do that unless I'm just playing for some reason. If I'm actually drawing a leaf, I pay attention or maybe I have a model. Unless I'm just drawing randomly from my imagination or for play, if I'm really going to do a leaf, it's not going to be um, via a hack method. And so how many hack methods do you have to have in your arsenal? Like how many resources, how many books do you have to have or how many videos do you have to collect so that, okay, today I want to paint an apple. Oh, let me go back to all my books and let me go back through all my videos to remember how such and such person, or maybe my collection of hack, favorite hack artists, um, I know that sounds really horrible, but um, my, my favorite people are um, how they draw an apple. And I'm like, that's, that is not, that's not what most artists do. Normal artists, people who've been drawing and painting their whole life, don't go back and trying to find a hack method. You learn the basics and it doesn't matter who you are. Um, it doesn't matter um, what artist that you love and you follow. I mean, you see all my book collections back here. Prominent alive artists who have published um, art instruction books, they're artists, they're real working artists or just people that are artists that have published a book, but the content is just the foundation of art in all of them. It, it might talk about their palette. That might be something individual. It might talk about um, their favorite materials. Um, but at the core, the content's the same. Composition, edges, you know, the, the color wheel, um, all the foundational principles of art. Um, basic measurements of how to draw a face or that type of thing. Um, mostly it's inspiration because you, you love them is usually the reason why you buy a book. Basically you'll find those same core principles in every one of these books. Not hacks. Not this is the way you draw a fruit. This is the way you draw a strawberry. This is the way you draw a Christmas tree. You know, those are hacks. Not that that's all bad. I've watched some of them myself. They pop up in my feed. It's kind of hard to not look at them sometimes. But if you get stuck in that, 
um, I think it's going to hinder you in the long run because really what you need is you need the foundational principles. You do know, you do need those. Um, and then you need, uh, you need to build a relationship with your media. You need to also experiment because how are you going to really know what media you really, your creative spirit kind of sings with, right? Um, for me, I, I like, I like watercolors and I like wash a little bit and I like oil painting. I'm not, I have some acrylics, but I'm not really happy using acrylics. I have some pens. I don't really care for the pens. Because I like to be more in control of what colors and changes I want to make. And it's kind of hard to do with a pen. Um, and I have some pastels, but I, I never feel quite confident about them. Because I feel like whether it's oil or the powdery type of pastel, the dry pastel, that it, um, it, it doesn't adhere without a lot of extra spray and stuff. And so, especially if you're working in a sketchbook, that kind of like bothers me about it a little bit. But, I mean, I've seen some beautiful ones, that's for sure. I certainly have some. But, I mean, you have to experiment. You have to spend a lot of time observing life and nature and um, having experiences and not only uh, building a relationship with the founding foundational knowledge, um, your materials, but also yourself. Because I know there are some days even I just... And you don't even know what it is, really. It could be anything about your personality that is hindering you from being creative. I've forced myself sometimes to go and sit down and, and draw. Like, for example, during the 30, 60, 90 day sketchbook challenge that I did last summer, uh, because I was sketching every day for 90 days, um, I had certain days I had major fails. And that's because, you know, there's something about you that doesn't feel off. Um, your energy level, something it is not quite right. You're just not feeling well. And it sometimes shows up. Sometimes you still have great results when you force yourself to, to draw or paint. Um, so I, I think that that's always there too. But I've had times where I sit down and I can feel I'm off. I'm really off. And I'm going to have to just stop because I'm getting aggravated sometimes and I just have to walk away. I have to walk away from what I'm doing and come back and revisit it on a better day. So, so I know that's a lot and I don't want to do ramble on too much day, but I do believe in play so much and I believe in finding the things that make your creative spirit sing. Like for me, as you probably know, if you've been with me before, I love getting outdoors. Unfortunately, here in Florida, I don't get to get outdoors very often, except for like right now when it's cooler. But for us, um, it goes back and forth, back and forth. We get hot days, cold days. It could be 30 degrees one day, 75 the next. It, you know, this is the kind of stuff that happens to us in, in winter. It could be even 80 degrees, like on Christmas day or something. It's not fun because I feel like, because I work all week, and then I have to wait till the weekend to get out and whether or not it's cool or not. And, and maybe do I have an appointment? I mean, I, you know, so it's not easy for me to get out. But I did get out recently and I was so glad because I needed it so badly. It's like, oh, it felt so wonderful just to be out um, on the trail and just amongst trees and hearing the birds sing and stuff. And it was pleasant enough. I didn't have to worry about snakes or anything or or ticks or anything like that. And I could just sit down on my little stool and do a quick watercolor. But um, other than that, I've been playing a lot. And you're going to miss all that if you are doing hacks. So another thing that I will tell you is how do you kind of tell when someone's a hack? Often they just do flowers. They, they can't do anything else but just the same repetitive, pattern-like type of stamped things. So, and it's great. Like if maybe if you're just trying to do a Christmas card on the fly and you want to do how to do a quick wreath, 
okay, that might be great. You got a, a quick inspiration. Okay, that's the way I want to make my, make my reef look like. Fine, no problem. I think those are great. So it's not like I'm trying to like negate them all or tell you don't ever watch those things. But take them, they're kind of like fast food. That's what this is like. You have to decide whether or not you're gonna eat uh, fast food every day or if you're going to um, actually go in there and make yourself a healthy meal. Um, so that's, <laughs> so I think that's a great uh, way to think about it. It's there if you need it for a quick, you know, quick idea on something. Um, but most of the time you really need to sit down. You need to get a sketchbook or some paper, a pad of paper. If you're just getting started, this being the new year, you know, this is probably, this is part of the reason why I'm bringing this up today is because we're at the start of the new year and maybe some of your goals are you wanna become more artistic. You want to spend more time doing art instruction just think about those things. Um, if I can, I will either, I'm gonna show you either a little bit here, a couple of good instruction books that you might wanna consider getting that has foundational stuff in it. So going over really quickly some of my favorite books, um, anything by Juliet Aristides. I've actually even taken a workshop with Juliet um, a few years back um, in 2019 in New York. She's a really well respected author, teacher, um, teaching representational drawing and painting. So I have a drawing book and a painting book and these are a couple books that actually have projects in them so that uh, it's got blank pages for you to draw in the books themselves. Um, this one's on the drawing as well. Then some watercolor, I love Mary White, and this is a great book. This is Mario Andres Robinson, he's also really well known. This is really old, it's something if you don't know anything about how to draw a figure, something like this is really cheap and it's got a lot of stuff in it. Um, if you're wanting to get better at classical drawing and drawing accurately and understanding representation, and how to see form really, really well. This is a great book for that, but it's not for the faint of heart. Um, but another book that I also like that I've recently got is this book by Todd Casey. And it's The Art of the Still Life, but it has um, a lot of great foundational principles in it of observing life. And this is the thing about hacks is that a lot of things affect what you're drawing, whether you're outside or inside, light, um, the reflection, local colors, um, how light bounces up and affects objects. You can't learn these things with a hack, so these are great books. I highly recommend them. But with it being a new year, I want you to think about, um, you know, just using those things piecemeal and not being a part of your daily nutrition. Your daily creative nutrition should not be fast food. <laughs> it should not be uh, art hacks. It should be building up a real foundation and an understanding for drawing and painting and playing with your materials and getting to know your creative spirit intimately. And it takes a long time. I mean, I literally do not remember not one day when I was not drawing or painting. I never, there was never a time where I decided that I have any memory of, um, of deciding that I want to draw because I have always, always drawn and painted. I did want to get better at oils, you know, such things I've wanted to work on over the years, but I've always been interested in art my whole life. That doesn't mean that you have to be that way, but I want you to realize is that think about the people that are you are going to, to be edified um, and um, to get inspiration for um, your creative goals and whether or not you're going to um, McDonald's or are you going to a, um, and trust me, I'm not trying to 
put myself up on some pedestal um or are, are you going to a, a super nice restaurant you know where somebody there's a chef someone who's been trained or has a lot of experience with cooking versus someone who's just shown how to flip a burger <laughs> you know um so uh i know i kind of feel bad about saying that but that's that's the way i feel i i don't think you should waste your time by just practicing art hacks you should really spend time uh, feeding your creative spirit and learning how to grow and it does take time it takes time and it takes commitment and I've shown that on here before um, where you just can put together a backpack and put it next to your chair your favorite chair that you come in if you you know you're finishing school or um, or just when you're watching TV at the end of the day um, where you can just sketch on the fly with a, just a few materials in it um, you could always carry a very small sketchbook in your purse or backpack or just even in your car for doodling on the on the go um, so there's lots of ways to practice and spend time doing art without leaning back on art hacks of course my two cents these are my thoughts um, and like I said I wasn't uh, I wasn't trying to put myself on some elevated pedestal by mentioning the fact that I've always drawn uh, I myself when I have wanted um, to learn more I have always gone to um, people who are well respected in the field um, in, in their books and looking at their work and I've gone to workshops I've uh, been to classes with people who, like people who were students of, uh, one of my teachers was a student of Nelson Shanks, who was like a very prominent artist who's passed away. Um, I've had classes with Scott Burdick, with Mary White, um, Scott Christensen. Um, I've g gone to classes with Julio Reyes and his wife. Um, so, I believe it's really good for you to feed yourself and look for people who know their, the field, they know the foundation, and they can inspire you and just teach you what they know. But again, like I said, this is my two cents from my personal experience. I personally, I love abstract work too, and I would like to merge. If, you, if you've been following me for a while, I'd eventually like to merge more of my representational style with an abstract uh, element to it. But I want the two worlds to kind of merge. Um, so I have been playing, and I, and I believe heavily in play of abstract. And I, I love abstract, it's really, really cool. I see some beautiful colors and beautiful compositions and stuff um, sometimes. So there is that, but um, I don't know if this is going to be helpful today or not, or if I've rambled on way too long. You can tell me your thoughts and your experiences for all these art hacks out there. Um, I, you know, I hate to say it, but it's like I even kind of put Bob Ross into this category with like using special brushes just to do certain things. You know, that's what I consider an art hack. And, and I'm not disrespecting him. He certainly motivated a lot of people to paint, that's for sure. Um, but those are not skills that are helpful in the long run. Not for day to day, not truly becoming a landscape artist or any of those types of things. I, moving forward, I'm planning to do more experimental stuff. I, I think I showed, if you watched last week's video, you saw I was playing a little bit in some of my new sketchbooks with doing some kind of abstract type of work, just playing with uh, types of backgrounds and things that, that you get using just abstract shapes and colors. Um, so I'm going to be playing and doing more of that moving forward in the next few weeks. So I'm going to be sharing some of that. But that is my rant and ramble for today for what it's worth. I hope that uh, that wasn't too much. I hope that you don't feel discouraged or I was trying to discourage you. I just want you to think about that. Make sure that if you are partaking in the McDonald's art hacks, you know, 
uh, that you also balance it out with real good foundational principles of art. So with that, I will leave it here today, dear ones, and I will see you back on another day. Happy January. Thank you.